KEHS campus goes through some noticeable renovations. And KEHS gets new student impressions of their first week at Episcopal. Hello and welcome to KEHS. I'm Whitley O'Donnell. And I'm Skylar Witt. Thanks for joining us on this edition of Night Vision News. The college application process is in full swing, and EHS seniors are hard at work gathering recommendations and applications in the hopes of landing their first choice college. Reporter Courtney Callahan has the story. Now is the time of year when seniors start applying for colleges. First, we have Jack Clark. I'm applying to TCU, Ole Miss, Alabama, LSU, and SMU. Um, all the work is really time consuming and busy, and uh, the Common App is a lot of work to do, and ACT prep, and keeping a steady GPA. Next, I interviewed Will Wamsley. As many as I can get in. <laughs> um, I mean, like TCU. TCU, <laughs> UT. No problem. TCU, no UT, Baylor, Alabama, Ole Miss, LSU, Auburn, Georgia. It's a lot. Like, finding the time to like actually fill out your forms for that <laughs> thing. Apply. apply. I mean, the college essay is easy. Um, and knowing what you want to apply to, like knowing your majors. Both are seniors here at Episcopal High School and are applying for colleges right now. Go Knights! <laughs> Thanks. Back to you. When it comes to preparation, nothing calls for more skills than the dreaded junior research paper. Reporter Alyssa Wall looks at the hype and learns what is really involved in this junior year project. During the summer, juniors were assigned a task of reading two to four books and writing an eight to ten page paper comparing and contrasting the different books. This assignment is to get them ready for the rigor of college. So in terms of challenges I face, I think uh, junior, junior year English is hard, but I think especially with Dr. Telford, there's a certain diction he likes, there's a certain way of uh, writing he likes, and so he preaches to us all the time. So if you don't write it the way he likes it, he's not going to give you a good grade, which is keeps you to a higher standard, keeps you uh, disciplined, which is, I, I like that. Uh, for preparation for college, I believe it's like, in college when a teacher assigns you a two-page essay, like, you've gone through the ringer already, you've already written uh, 10 to 12 pages, so uh, two pages wouldn't be that big of a deal. You know how to write, you know how to be concise and have good uh, manner of speech. So the junior research paper is a synthesis paper. It's taking two pieces of literature and looking at them together. So we take two novels. This is the first year we've done it where we have the novel that everybody read over the summer, and then we have the Kite Runner. So we're studying the Kite Runner together. And then in the end, we research, we get in the library, we look at stuff online, and we create a six-page paper for the level. I think it's 12 pages for honors uh, that brings those two books together, explores some sort of interesting aspect, some theme or something like that, uh, very deeply. Good luck to all juniors as they work through this assignment. Thank you, Alyssa. The November deadline for those papers is fast approaching. Now we join Ethan Toe and his report on interim term for 2020. There are a few various interim term trips happening over the interim term, and one of these trips to go to San Francisco has interested plenty of people. And we're going to do all of the main San Francisco things, go see the Golden Gate Bridge and uh, ride along the cable cars. Um, but we'll also be visiting Stanford and doing a tour there, um, as well as visiting the Google campus and some maker spaces and doing some uh, marine biology at the Monterey Bay Aquarium and a couple of other places. Ms. Russ also mentions why and what interests her about this trip and defining things about San Francisco and just the Northern California area. Well, I teach um, all different science classes and so um, it's a cool place to be able to see the redwood trees and to have the ocean there, um, and it's got nice weather. I wanted to visit Stanford and meet a lot. And meet a lot of new people and learn a lot from professors. Um, well, I wanted to see um, the Golden Gate Bridge and the aquarium, but like I said, I mostly wanted to go to Stanford. Um, I'm looking forward to meeting all the, a bunch of all the people I'm going on with me and really getting to learn about San Francisco. This is Ethan Toe for KEHS News. In faculty news, a new crop of teachers is already making a significant and notable impact in the classroom. My co-anchor Skylar Witt has the story. 
Thanks, Whitley. Now here's Mr. Lauer with some hard adjustments. Well, I would have to say the fact that the cross country team practices at 6 a.m. every morning, five days a week, is definitely a hard adjustment. It means that I have to wake up at 4.30 every morning. So that's taken some getting used to, but otherwise, I think it's been all right. Then I asked Mr. Lauer how his classes were going. So far, I'm pretty impressed with the student body and how they apply themselves. I like the participation that I get in class. Granted, I only teach 10th graders, so I might have a bit of a bias, but so far, they've all been pretty awesome. Lastly, I asked Mr. Lauer about any big differences in the transition to Episcopal High School. I would say the biggest difference is the emphasis on technology is significantly higher here. Um, in previous locations, it's been almost um, prohibitive in the way that it deals with technology. Cell phones weren't allowed at any time. Laptops were only for use at home. Whereas here in the classroom, we get use of both in various circumstances and students have full access to which I'm not sure they're even, I don't even think students understand how good they have it to be able to have their phones in between class and to be able to use them as one would normally use a cell phone. So that's the biggest difference I've really seen. New faces can also be found at the computer help desk where the number of IT members has doubled, a benefit to all of us on the campus. Jason DeGeorge brings us news on this growing department. EHS is a laptop driven community, which means lots of issues occur on these computers. Now we go to the gurus at the help desk for more insight on these issues. I'd say with computer knowledge, we have a broad range of experience, you know, working with Mac computers, uh, both hardware and software. We have certifications to fix Mac computers as well as troubleshoot. And yeah should be it. You know, the, the more you work with them, the easier it gets. Restart your computer. Restart it. Oh, and also, uh, to ward off cracked screens, make sure you don't put anything in between your computer when closing it, like a stapled paper. They're pretty fragile because of how thin they are. Um, my knowledge, I mean, I've been working with Apple computers since 1990, so I've been working with Apple for a while. Um, started at one of the manufacturing plants, and that's where I got my basic knowledge. Then I was a field rep for Apple for about 15 years as well. So, so I'm well-rounded with the Apple platform. Um, also, we're all certified here at EHS. Um, every one of us that work in the help desk are all certified. Um, definitely restart your computer. That's the number one thing. Um, we have folks come in that haven't restarted their computer for 35, 40 days. Um, try to do it at least twice a week. Um, on top of that, updates. If you get any update, messages or anything like that, run those updates. It'll help you out in the end. I'm glad I got to know more about the faculty at the help desk. I'm Jason DeGeorge. Back to the studio. Next up is Harrison Wallace with his look at the arts pillar and the stagecraft team. I'm going to interview Ms. Rivas for the stagecraft of the upcoming play. We start with the script. We figure out what we need from the script. So in this case, you need a door leading into a uh, a library area, a dining room, there's a front door, there's a door into a kitchen, there's stairs that I'm sitting on right now. You, you find all the things that are required in the script. And then you take that idea of how you want it to, how you want it to look and, you, and how it fits into your space. Mm -hmm. So this design uh, is drafted and all designed out to fit on the Underwood stage so that it suits the show and the way we're approaching the show, if that makes sense. All right. um, started over the summer. You read the script several times, then you sit down and, and look at the, the plan for the, the stage itself, what you have for space, and start moving pieces around. You make sure that if you're going to put the stairs here and the couch there, you've got enough room to get through, but it's not so big that you're out of the way. Sneaky little things like there's a lot of room in front, but you need to be able to close the curtain between acts, so that affects how, where you put things. And then just really what you want it to look like, how to design it so that it kind of comes off the way you're wanting it to look. This is big. This is a very large, it's called a box set, it's three walls, um, but it's intentionally very large and, and kind of stately looking for this space. Mm -hmm. Well, we're not done yet, so it's hard for me to say, but uh, generally speaking, we'll keep picking at it right up until we open next Thursday morning, or sorry, Thursday afternoon, um, for you guys. But we've been working on this in varying forms. We started building on August 7th, I think, um, and 
we have set builds on Saturdays. We build during the stagecraft classes. Sometimes I pick away at it at lunch and during the day in free periods, and we just keep churning along. The, the list of things to do gets shorter, and we get into more and more finite work. We're finishing up trim work, we're painting edges, and we've got to stay in the stairs a little bit and uh, until we get right to the end. Harrison Wallace for EHS News. Thanks, Harrison. The behind the scenes work being done is clearly vital to arts productions. Our fall sports teams are already well into their schedules after a summer of preseason practice. Let's see how the cross country teams are doing in reporter Quan Marion. We're not at the field while our cross country team train and practice to get better every day. Over the weekend, they had their first meet at Houston Christian High School, and it was a tough one for your school. Congratulations to all the runners that came out and ran, and a special congratulations to Kay Freeman for coming in first place. I spoke with Coach Michaels about how he felt about the meet at Houston Christian and what he looked forward to this upcoming season. Overall, I felt pretty good about the race on the boys' side. The varsity went pretty well. Girls' side, the same thing. Last year, the girls won it, so we were going in hoping to win it, but uh, we were missing some runners, so we ended up uh, not winning it, but we still had the top overall finish in the race, so that was pretty good. Going into the race, the, the runners were not rested, both on uh, varsity, JV, boys and girls. So we just trained hard and we did not rest. So overall that will help when it comes to SPC, when we start resting and you teach your body to just push through when you're tired. And then when we rest for SPC, it will make SPC a lot easier. Reporting live from KHS News, this is Jukon Murray, States. Also in the athletics pillar, the field hockey team is hard at work and have competed in a number of tournaments and matches. KEHS's Charlotte Pond brings us the story on the growing program. As fall sports are ending and winter sports are beginning, sports like field hockey are getting ready for their SBC tournament. Field hockey has been doing really well this year. Our next game is tomorrow night against Duchenne. Um, the field hockey team has really good chemistry and we're excited for SPC this year and we've been getting better every year. Thank you Tatum. As I watch the girls practice, I can see that they do have really good work ethic, energy, and chemistry. Make sure to go to all field hockey's games and support our fellow Knights. Back to you in the studio, I'm Charlotte Pond. When it comes to sports, fan support can be a crucial element to a team's success. Nowhere was that spirit more shown than the first pep rally of the season. Sela Sanders has the story. Pep rallies are a time when the whole school come together to cheer on the varsity athletic teams. From cheer to competitions, the pep rallies have it all. Here, Sophie Butler talked about her favorite part of pep rallies. Competition between the grade levels because it's really interesting to see like the freshmen and the seniors like compete. I like the cheerleading because they do a ton of cool flips and stuff. This is Sheila Sanders and have fun at your next pep rally. In other campus news, the USC cafeteria team continues to amaze the community with delicious and sometimes unique offerings, both breakfast and lunch. Reporter Olivia Henshaw looks into one of the favorite parts of the EHS experience. The cafeteria food is a very vital part of students' day-to-day -day on campus life. It boosts us with energy and gives us time to catch up with our friends. Mitchell Glotfelty enjoys the cafeteria food every day. One, like just the food in the hot line. Um, there's different types of food to say you have like the same like three things every day. So. Kendall Leventhal also shares with us her put on school lunch. I get a chicken salad sandwich on cauliflower flatbread and a bowl of pineapple. My favorite thing is how there are so many options and food from other cultures, like sometimes they'll have sushi or like street tacos. I would add an ice cream sundae bar with lots of toppings. Many students enjoy the diversity of new cultures being introduced to us daily through food. The sandwich bar seems to be a hit and hot spot of lunch. Students feel that with many choices at lunch, they don't feel compelled to eat the same items every day and they tend to reach out of their comfort zone. Back to you. I always look forward to lunch and what the ladies are cooking up for us. Many students frequent the school store for all their needs, whether it is a snack, supplies, or clothing. My co-anchor, Whitley O'Donnell, brings us the news on the hub of the campus. The school store is a huge part of the life at EHS. Many people use the school store every day and come and get what they need. Um, I, 
like to come in and get stuff that I forget and just like food and anything in general. Really convenient and I can get whatever I need for school or to eat or to wear whatever I need it. So it's real like, it's easy to get there. Some people even feel that they can't go a day without using the school store. There's way too much stuff in here that I need on a daily basis. Can you hear well, I couldn't live out the school store because um, I need it. <laughs> I need it. I just, I can't go a single day without walking in there with my friends or maybe if I don't even get anything, just walking in there. It's a, it's a cool hangout spot. Many people enter the school store each day and during the day there are some items that are bought more frequently than others. Probably like the protein bars and the protein drinks and maybe some goldfish sometimes. Goldfish. <laughs> yes, goldfish. Some people will love the school store so much that they make friends with the people who work there. Uh, with some of them, yes. They come in and talk to me on their free period or just random stuff. Well, that's all we have this week on Night Vision News. I'm Skylar Witt. And I'm Whitley O'Donnell from all of us at KHS News. Thank you for joining us. And, and go, go Knights! Knights!